Uh, it remains to be seen if African governments will incorporate telemedicine innovators into national healthcare delivery strategies and schemes. Although there is increasing evidence and potential for improving health outcomes, health tech startups are still encountering obstacles. Overcoming these challenges is crucial to fully realizing the public health benefits of technology-driven innovations. Bade Joku, a Diwali and entrepreneur, health tech business coach and CEO of Fruitify NG, is here to discuss the health tech industry in Nigeria and address key issues for future growth. Many thanks for joining me, Bade Joku. Thank you, Justin, for having me on your program today. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Now, Africa's health technology sector saw a 7% increase in funding last year, marking the only industry in the continent to experience year-on-year -year growth. Now, with Africa facing some of the highest disease rates globally, the surge of innovation and development in health technology couldn't have been more timely. How does the outlook for this year appear? Okay, um, thank you for the question. Really, we need to contextualize this increase right, um, 7 percent in the scheme of things is still small. While we're grateful for the increased awareness that is coming into the sector and in the industry, um, again, some of this is also not unconnected to some of the challenges faced in other industries, and then they need to deploy attention into other places. And then you start looking at the healthcare industry um, as a place to, you know, go into. But the point is, there is still a lot more to do, and there's still a lot more resources required to get this done. And so in terms of general outlook, from my end, it's essentially enthusiasm. I'm hoping that we'll see more, more patronage even from stores. We'll see more patronage from the government itself, more investments from even the user who are at the receiving end of, you know, the the services of you know healthcare and so enthusiasm with some word for the outlook this year we are in the month of may i should also mention at uh, the second quarter of the year we've seen some movements um, and body language from the federal government uh we've seen some investments coming in and that's some good encouragement as well too, but we have a long way to go um our population is rising astronomically and seven percent of what we currently have now will not take care of that population right so that's why i said it's I mean, when you hear the increase, it seems good, but when you contextualize it to the outcome, we have a long way to go. But again, the outlook is, um, is one that shows that there's quite a lot to still happen before the remaining days of this year. All right. Uh, you will agree with me that um, technology has actually uh, come to stay and it is uh, gaining momentum by the day. But specifically in Nigeria and indeed Africa, what we get to hear most of the time is uh, fintech, fintech. Everyone is trying to get into fintech. Uh, they're actually really, very really growing if you look at the entire economy of Nigeria. Yeah. But let's talk about uh, health tech. I'm sure it is... I would say it's a novel uh, sector, but then we're still uh, yet we are yet to appreciate um, all of the inherent benefits as a country and, of course, um, as a, a continent. So let just run us through exactly what the key the key prospect of um, the health tech value chain are specifically, or value chains rather are in Nigeria. Okay, so let's start with some context. Health tech is essentially the use of technology to improve any and every part of the healthcare um, value chain, right? And so a company that uses that technology is called an air technology company, right? Technology itself is nothing other than practical application of, you know, conceptual knowledge over time, right? And so I think this establishes what an health tech is and then we can start looking at the play. But you see, there's no way we can talk about health technology, which is the use of technology without mentioning or making strong difference to the healthcare system. And we need to understand what the healthcare system in Nigeria is. Justin, I can confirm to you, we have not even scratched the surface when it comes to healthcare system. What we have done to this point is essentially disease care. And I'll give you an instance. And you trace back the genealogy of what seems to be hospitals and healthcare in Nigeria, and you begin to get a clearer picture of what you're dealing with. The first and oldest hospital in Nigeria, which is the St. Art Hospital, right, was founded as a reaction to the leprosy epidemic in the 1857 year about, right? And so that's where the concept of our hospital and then healthcare start taking form from. So the mission of many hospitals that you see currently in Nigeria are not suited for health care, 
rather they've been suited for disease care and you mm. see the system again i mean this is not a there's a there's any way to look at the problem um it's people problem it's industry problem it's service problem but summarily you realize that for um a lot of change to come in where we now start leveraging technology it still boils down to a system problem so we need to look at the healthcare system and then begin to really think about it now, we have a burgeoning population, right? Depending on who is mentioning the numbers, at least we can all agree that it is 200 million plus. And you are dealing with that huge number of people, and you have to make sure that you deliver health care to them. By health care, I mean not just the absence of disease or infirmity. Health care is a state of mind. Okay. It's just have this, you know, they are in a state of well-being, physically, mentally, and socially. Now, when you begin to understand this, then you can start seeing the role that technology has to play and can play. And so it's like a hand-to-hand -hand deficiency we currently have. There's a lot of challenge on the preventive. There's a lot of challenge on the curative. There's a lot of challenge on the management. And it's not so much of, you know, people talk about, you know, doctors and the likes, but it's so much of the system. And that's where I think we can actually start the use or addressing technology as a solution for healthcare. And that's where we are focused on as an organization to really, really look at the healthcare value chain mm. and then address these problems using technology. And when you start looking at the healthcare value chain, jo Justin, yeah. at the end of the day, you start focusing on the user, not the disease. And in that space, you begin to think of personalization, right? Because uh -huh. malaria everywhere is the same. Okay. However, Justin and Adewali Badejoko are two different persons, even if we have malaria. Mm. And so it's a shift from disease care, which is what we have done over time, that has not worked, okay. into a focus on health care, and then mm -hmm. we can start leveraging technology. So these are the conversations we need to start having. Mm. And uh, before we can start thinking of, you know, how to actually move the need to really terms of transformation or a change that is really marked and visible for uh -huh. every Nigerian user. And so, yeah, Justin, mm. that's summarily the, you know, again, the role of health tech, but we need to start sitting down to really address health care and not what we have done in terms of focusing on All disease right. care to this point. All right, but uh, let's look at another aspect that is actually very popular, which is um, pharma tech as it were. Now, entrepreneurs are equipping pharmacies mm -hmm with solutions to enhance stock management uh, efficiency. Yeah. They try to also monitor patients' purchase histories and oversee customer databases. But what's, what are some of the factors that, are, that can actually help alleviate some of the challenges in this area uh, in terms of uh, enhancing uh, B2B and then B2C operations? Um, in, including B2G operations as well, too. Um, I should mention that it's quite mm. very expensive to set up a health technology company. Mm. However, everybody has a part to play. Um, for Fruity Fire, we have decided to fix the or the user, they draw out the change from there. Um, businesses also have a part to play. Government also have a part to play, especially because of the reach that the government has. But in speaking to you know, some of the challenges for set up a health uh, technology company. Um, secondly, you also have human resource problems, right? You have changed along the line of human resources. The competencies are not there. It takes a lot to build a health technology company. You need the understanding from uh, good understanding, astute knowledge of the health industry, and then you need equally an astute understanding of uh, technology. And that's how you'll be able to actually you know, draw up um, a solution along the line of health technology. But if you look at it critically, what we have is many of our healthcare organizations are not equipped in terms of professionalism and skills, right, for technology. And many technology persons do not have the competence to dive into the healthcare industry. And so we currently have a challenge with human resource. We don't have enough persons with adequate astute knowledge of healthcare as well as astute knowledge of technology to be able to create solutions for So where do we find a common persons? ground now to meet up with the human resources for the healthcare uh, delivery per se, uh, the healthcare practitioners and those who actually understand them, the role of um, technology, please. How do we go about enhancing all of that? 
the easiest place to start is the tertiary institutions, right? At the end of every academic program, um, healthcare students or medical students um, will take on, you know, different research work, um, different projects. I think that's the cradle of innovation. And I think the, the earlier we start introducing actively, right, technology into the course of study, we begin to form new sets of healthcare leaders that are also prepared and relevant for today's challenges. Now, that said, on the human um, resource part of things, also in terms of the funding required, I just mentioned it's quite expensive yeah. to get a healthcare business started. And the change for that will happen when, just like fintech, we start considering health tech as an asset to be owed. Right. Um, there's currently, and I'm sure you are aware of uh, a fintech that was currently uh, almost on the verge of bust, yeah. but was rally around and acquired by some set of organization. Now, the point is not the fact that they didn't let that startup go to waste, but it's the mindset towards fintech as an asset class. Right. It's something that you can start that can give you value. Right. It's something that can help fulfill your financial goals, whatever that is. It's something that you can own, can build, can start that can also help really cause, you know, great impact. And so the more we start viewing health technology companies or health technology as an asset class, the easier it is for us to start releasing, you know, um, funds even into that industry, and then we see quite a lot of growth as well, too. Um, I must, at this point, also reference that there are fundamental challenges within the healthcare space that makes it difficult for health technologies to grow, and that's the aspect of policies. If you look at the prominence that fintech companies have had, it's also not all connected to the policies and framework that the federal government has set and put in place, either via the Ministry of Finance or through the CBN, right? We don't have such coordination in the healthcare space, right? You have, the, you have several policies that makes it easy for businesses in the fintech to be regulated, right? You don't have the same for healthcare businesses. And when those things are not there, it shows the heartbeat of the government, and it's almost difficult okay, so, to start so, attracting... So, by the way, if I should, if I should um, butt in right now, so are you saying um, the issue of uh, uh, regulation or the lack of it in some way is actually hampering uh, the growth of um, the health tech business in Nigeria? Yes, it is. Yes, it is, frankly. And you can view it from many aspects. You can look at those or the current technocrats who are leading charge. Amazing people. However, how connected are they with the realities of Nigeria today? I mean, the end users of the solutions, right? And so while they have good healthcare, you know, uh, years of expertise in that industry they are probably not connected with many of the realities of the user today and with the growth of technology and so that is causing a little strain because they are the ones at the end of the affairs or in terms of policy formulation so i believe that we can still use a whole number of policies that could strengthen our healthcare industry and that will ultimately affect the health technology part of it as well too take for instance the concept of open banking that the fin financial industry in Nigeria uses, right? Um, if we can have something close in terms of open health, where you can travel just from Lagos to Cardinal and your health details travels along the line with mm. you. So perhaps you have the need to visit a healthcare facility. You are not having to start your user journey from the beginning again. It's all a matter of flipping up your records and then you are able to follow up on your history and to that point be able to give you personalized attention for what? what you are needing. But right now, everybody's operating in silos. Okay. Right, the information that is open to fortify is not synced into a national database and um, for maybe a state hospital. I mean, just need to be shocking that even in the premise of a teaching hospital where you have several departments in one, you still have to carry your file from one department to another, mm. right, to get health care. And imagine at that point in time where you are probably at your lowest trying to get you know wellness, and the, the system is already burdening you simply by carrying your records and data to get access to care in another department within the same organization mm. then you see that there's a lot to be done in terms of policy that could actually truly right. help and we really need to sit down as stakeholders really define how we are going to actually tackle healthcare okay. in nigeria are we going to play with fairism are we going to play socialism or are we going to do capitalism okay. but regardless of whatever it is that we choose we have right. got to start focusing back on the people the user of these healthcare solutions okay but then as we round off <laughs> you will agree with me that uh 
there is a whole lot of uh, proliferation uh, in the app business, as it were, you know, with the fintech now. So what's the situation like in the health tech system? Uh, uh, have that particular sector been able to embrace uh, the, uh, the app technology, you know, to improve the sector? And I understand that you were in Abelkota on Monday and you were doing something in that regard. Can you just tell us so far um, how the app business has actually affected the tech, health tech business or uh, sector in Nigeria? So mobile, mobile app adoption is just growing in the healthcare space. And in the healthcare sector, it's not so much the app, right? It's much of the user, your understanding of the healthcare to be able to leverage technology, mm -hmm. which is a body of knowledge, to get the desired outcome done. And so not many persons have the competence to be able to do it. So there's need for a fine act of people with technology understanding, pro good product development understanding, as well as people with astute knowledge around the effects don't have that currently. And so the growth is still rather kind of slow. And that's what I can say concerning the app business in the health technology sector. However, one of the joys that we've had at Fruitify was the fact that we are able, again, as an organization to contribute in that growing industry with the launch of the Fruitify mobile app, which is essentially an attempt at addressing right, the preventive. Are you still there? Yes, Justin. Okay, let's just. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. We need to round off now. Yeah. All right. And so, yes, um, just summarily, on Monday, we were able to launch the Fruitify mobile app for the use of the Nigerian uh, populace desiring better healthcare access for them for them all right certify is focused along the line of preventive healthcare and we've been able to develop a technology that right. helps you taking cognizance of you know the very key important things like your diet physical fitness or physical activity even your genetics and personal preferences to be able to help you live your best right, life you without I'm sorry, we we'll just have to let you go and as much as uh, we are enjoying the conversation uh, we have to charge you commercial rates for all of that. I have been speaking with Bandi Joko Adewale. He is the CEO of uh, Fruitify NG, and we have been looking at the health tech uh, uh, industry in the country and potential challenges and opportunities for investment in the sector. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Do appreciate your time. Thank you, Justin. It's a pleasure to be here once again. Right. Thank you so much. And that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.